Welcome to Minnesota Housing's Logistics Tutorial. This presentation provides an overview of important logistical considerations you will need to be aware of when applying to Minnesota Housing's annual consolidated request for proposals and housing tax credits round one. Minnesota Housing's mission is to provide access to safe, decent, affordable housing and build stronger communities across the state by offering products and services to help Minnesotans buy and fix up their homes and stabilize neighborhoods, communities, and families. Minnesota Housing also supports the development and preservation of affordable rental housing through both the financing and long-term asset management of projects and developments. The agency has also pioneered a successful model for supportive housing that helps stabilize the lives of some of the state's most vulnerable citizens. This tutorial will cover the following topics. Application and submission highlights, the multifamily customer portal and secure upload tool, Application and Submission Resources Components of the Intent to Apply, or ITA, including forms, submission requirements, and details regarding fee remittance. Qualification Forms and Sponsor Financials Components of the RFP Package How to Apply for Project-Based Vouchers And some important details to be aware of in regard to the Housing Tax Credits, or HTC, self-scoring worksheet and deferred loan priority checklist. The multifamily consolidated RFP has several submission requirements and applicable due dates. All times listed are CDT or Central Daylight Time. This slide highlights submission items, how to submit those items, and the applicable due dates for each. This information is also listed in the multifamily application instructions, which can be found on our website. Notice that the Multifamily Customer Portal is the primary submission tool for application materials required through the consolidated RFP. Also note that certain required items can only be submitted to Minnesota Housing using the Multifamily Secure Upload Tool, or by mail or in person. These unique submission requirements include applicable qualification forms, the fee remittance form, applicable fees, and relevant supporting documentation. Refer to the multifamily application instructions found on our application resources page at www.mnhousing.gov for more detailed information. As noted earlier, certain documents that contain confidential and private data can only be submitted through the Multifamily Secure Upload Tool. Detailed instructions explaining how to access and submit items using the tool can be found on the application resources page under Development Team Qualification Forms. Click See More Information About Qualification Forms, Step 1 on the slide, which will take you to the section titled How to Submit. Then click Multifamily Secure Upload Tool, Step 2 on the slide. It is important to note that qualification forms must be completed and electronically submitted by an authorized officer of the appropriate development team's organization. Note that receipt of a qualification form or forms does not constitute funding approval. By submitting these documents through a secure file exchange, you are also able to receive documents from Minnesota Housing by authenticating with your email, submit questions, and contact designated teams at Minnesota Housing. The Multifamily Customer Portal is the agency's web-based application tool for applicants and the primary method for submission of application items. Unless otherwise noted, application materials including supporting documentation must be uploaded to the portal. The portal allows our customers to log in, create a customized application checklist based on the type of proposal they will submit, upload all application materials, and eventually collaborate on documents in the due diligence phase. To access the portal, customers and those submitting documents on behalf of the selected project must complete a request form and include contact information for their organization as well as a list of staff from their organization who will need to access the portal. Customers can decide who should submit documents on behalf of the selected project. We suggest choosing two to three individuals who will be your organization's core team submitting documents. If staff from your organization already have a portal account, you do not need to request a new account. More detailed information about how to access and use the online portal can be found on the application resources page at www.mnhousing.gov or by clicking the Multifamily Customer Portal Resources link 
that can be found on the left side of the web page under Quick Links. The logistics of the consolidated RFP process can change. It is important that all applicants, new and those familiar to the consolidated RFP process, review resources and tools along with highlights and changes to the current RFP round. Along with explaining how to submit an application and outlining relevant deadlines and changes, we are including in this tutorial two additional highlights for 2019. Information for those interested in applying for project-based vouchers and highlights of key characteristics pertaining to the Housing Tax Credits HTC self-scoring worksheet and deferred loan priority checklist. Minnesota Housing provides several resources to assist applicants in submitting a complete and competitive application. The Multifamily Application Instructions is a primary resource for successful submission of an application. This resource provides a helpful overview of funding sources, relevant due dates for application materials, project eligibility considerations, important links to critical documents such as underwriting and design standards, housing tax credits or HTC documents, relevant guides and materials, instructions for creating a portal account, and links to tutorials. Applicants should review the entire application instructions document and access references and links for more detailed information. The instructions are intended to assist applicants in meeting all requirements by the set due dates. They provide helpful insight into key areas of the process and highlight items to which applicants should pay special attention. The application instructions, including preservation pre-applications, intent to apply, and the full application, can be found on the Application Resources page at www.mnhousing.gov. In addition to the application instructions, an applicant has access to many resources that can aid in the application process and which can be found on our Application Resources page. All applicants are responsible to access materials as directed in the application instructions and as outlined on our website. Contact information will also be provided on the last slide, but feel free to email Lori Lindbergh at lori.lindbergh at state.mn.us with any questions or if you need assistance in navigating the application resources and materials on our website. Minnesota Housing requires submission of an Intent to Apply, or ITA, along with applicable supporting documents for all applicants wanting to submit an application through the Multifamily RFP and the Housing Tax Credits HTC Round 1. Submission of required documents and applicable fees by the posted due dates is essential for an application to move forward. Minnesota Housing must receive application materials by the specified date and time. Note that all times listed are CDT, or Central Daylight Time. The following items are required for an on-time submission of an RFP application. The Intend to Apply ITA stage includes submission of qualification forms and complete financial information by the ITA deadline. Submission of any of the required application fees, as applicable and as required by the deadline. Submission of items that demonstrate and provide acceptable evidence of title slash site control, which includes acceptable documentation of a purchase commitment option or a letter of intent from a governmental body for a sole developer. Please note that for site control, if there is no transfer of ownership, then the warranty deed or contract for deed is acceptable. The evidence of site control must be current, fully executed, include the legal description of the land, and extend to the anticipated date of the funding recommendation. Refer to the ITA form or the portal help text for more details. Both can be found on our website. All applicants must submit an intent to apply using the multifamily customer portal. If you do not have a portal account, reference our website on the application resources page for a link to information about setting one up. All applicable application fees are due with the intent to apply, which also means Minnesota Housing must receive the fee remittance form and all applicable fees by May 17, 2019. Please refer to the multifamily application instructions for more information. Fee remittance forms and applicable fees must be delivered to Minnesota Housing either through mail delivery or in person. Minnesota Housing offices close at 4.30 p.m. 
which means Minnesota Housing must receive in-person delivery of any fee remittance forms and applicable fees before 4.30 p.m. CDT or Central Daylight Time on May 17, 2019. If mailing forms and fees, Minnesota Housing must have fee remittance forms and applicable fees delivered by 5 p.m. CDT on May 17, 2019. Remit to Minnesota Housing to the attention of Tamara Wilson at 400 Wabasha Street North, Suite 400, St. Paul, Minnesota, 55102. Failure to include applicable fees by the due date may result in rejection of your June 3rd full application submission. All qualification forms, financial documents, and applicable attachments must be submitted using Minnesota Housing's Secure Upload Tool. Each RFP funding round and or year-round funding application requires the submission of a qualification form from all development team members if any of the following apply. The information on a previously submitted qualification form has significantly changed. The qualification form has been on file with Minnesota Housing in excess of 12 months. All qualification forms, financial documents, and applicable attachments must be submitted using Minnesota Housing's Secure Upload Tool no later than 5 p.m. CDT on May 17, 2019. All qualification forms can be found on the Application Resources page by selecting See More Information about Qualification Forms. You will also find a link to the Secure Upload page here as well. Qualification forms must be completed by an authorized officer of the appropriate development team's organization. Note that receipt of qualification forms does not constitute funding approval. Applicants must upload documents or opt out of appropriate checklist items within the application checklist generated for the type of funding requested by the specified due dates. The application package is due by 5 p.m. CDT on June 3, 2019. Uploading of documents includes providing a completed multifamily workbook and all supporting documentation to justify criteria claimed on the HTC self-scoring worksheet and deferred loan priority checklist. Public housing agencies, or PHAs, may provide an allocation of project-based vouchers in an annual RFP round. In 2019, Metro HRA and St. Paul PHA have allocated project-based vouchers to the 2019 RFP. Applicants with developments in the jurisdictions covered by Metro HRA and St. Paul PHA may apply for these project-based vouchers. In 2019, Metro HRA is offering up to 20 project-based Section 8 Veterans Affairs Supportive Housing Vouchers, also known as VASH Vouchers, and St. Paul PHA is offering up to 125 project-based Section 8 Vouchers in the following allocations. Allocating up to 50 Housing Choice Vouchers, or HCVs, as project-based in mixed-income developments that provide affordable housing along with market-rate housing. Allocating up to 50 HCVs as project-based vouchers in developments as supportive housing for persons experiencing homelessness. And allocating up to 25 VASH vouchers as project-based vouchers in developments for homeless veterans. Applicants interested in project-based vouchers may make a request for project-based vouchers only or a request for project-based vouchers with capital funding. All applicants must complete a PHA-specific questionnaire and the multifamily rental housing narrative. For project-based vouchers with a capital funding request, applicants must identify this within their intent to apply form and complete the PHA-specific questionnaire as part of the application submission. For project-based vouchers without a capital funding request, applicants must complete the project-based vouchers only checklist. For project-based vouchers only requests, the intent to apply and application checklist are not required. Refer to the appropriate PHA manual for specific requirements for project eligibility, including minimum request amounts. These manuals can be found on our application resources webpage under Funding Partner Resources. Applicants seeking project-based vouchers must submit documentation by 5 p.m. CDT on May 17, 2019. The documentation required is slightly different for applicants interested in project-based vouchers only versus project-based vouchers with a capital funding request. Within the Multifamily Customer Portal, the applicant will be able to designate this preference. Applicants must be aware that for projects seeking project-based vouchers with a capital funding request, a common application is required, 
plus the Public Housing Authority's specific questionnaire. The score sheets slash checklists ask what type of funding you are applying for. Your options are a 9% housing tax credits only request, a 9% housing tax credits and a deferred loan request, a deferred loan only request, or a deferred loan request with a 4% housing tax credits HTC financial structure. You will need to check the box in the self-scoring worksheet that identifies the type of funding for which you are applying. Please note that for 9% HTC dual applications, you will upload two separate self-scoring worksheets. You will submit a 9% HTC self-scoring worksheet and a deferred loan request with a 4% financial structure self-scoring worksheet as part of your application. To submit a dual application, these checklists must be created separately. It is also important to note that to be considered for 9% housing tax credits or to be considered for a project with a deferred loan and a 4% financial structure, the HTC tab in the workbook must be completed. For more information regarding RFP logistics, including strategic or selection priorities, selection standards, or cost reasonableness cost containment considerations, please contact Lori Lindbergh directly by email or phone. Thank you for taking the time to view this tutorial.